<laughs> Hello, good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you to our sensation spotlight. Um, we're gonna go share our this live to our pages. So if you can share this to your pages, start a watch party for us, and then we'll get started in like two seconds. Two seconds. So let me get this here. We want to welcome everyone. Got to share now. Yeah. I don't know. I want to share your so that have. Uh, Okay. I'll put the spotlight so they'll know where to go to read. Then I'm gonna share this to my page. All right, here we go. All right. I'm just trying to share. They didn't want me to do a watch part. I'm like, no, I just want to share it. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Okay, I guess that's, I did it right. All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday evening. Um, I am Nikisha Washington. I am the CEO and founder of Nyla Denae Enterprises, where we inspire and encourage young girls to have confidence, character, and class and become future leaders. And so one way that we do this is by we're really promoting STEM. And for those who don't know STEM, and science, technology, engineering, and math. And we really are trying to create future STEM leaders. And so if you know that we have our whole agenda about introducing and promoting STEM to young girls, and we also have our Nyla Nova character that we are produ uh, where we're producing. And we definitely want you guys to check it out if you have it at NylaDenae.com, where we have the activity book for children, and where we'll start having our workshop signups and summer camps registered. So t this evening, we have the lovely and talented um, Kara Smith. And so um, we're going to get started Hello. with our um, agenda. And so we're going to go ahead and let her begin and give her the introduction. Yes. I'm going to take my name off of here. So it's just shut okay. There you go. Go ahead. Kara. Okay. So hello, everyone. I just want to say thank you for having me. You're so um, good. Thank you for being here. <laughs> so like she said, I'm Kara Smith, and I've kind of been in the tech field for about, well, this year we'll make it five years. Wow. Um, I got my degree from Kennesaw State in computer science, and now I actually work as a UI engineer for ShareCare. Um, it's actually a healthcare company, and they have a platform that basically helps you know individuals you know people like yourself and you know your viewers to um, store all of their healthcare information just in one place and then they also um, you know partner with insurance companies with health healthcare providers to kind of help them provide services to their customers and patients um, so I've been doing that here for a little while prior to that I um, worked in e-commerce so you know for all you people who shop online or who you know sell online and make money online i was kind of involved in that space as well and i just want to say because i know when i read about your e-commerce you worked with some like big name yeah. um so can you do some little name dropping yeah. for us <laughs> yeah so i actually prior to working with ShareCare, i worked at ey studios in atlanta as well um and you know we worked on some pretty big sites like one for example any carolina panther fans out there. Um, I worked on their their site, um, their merchandise site where they you know sell their jerseys, stuff like that. Um, and also the Detroit Pistons. That's one site that I worked on as well with UI Studios. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. Um, all right, so this is your time to say who are you? Like I know you kind of gave us overview of what you do, but this is like any background you would like to give us at this time. Yeah, so just you know just a brief background. I've kind of always been interested in tech. Um, even as like a little girl, I was like, you know, always tech savvy and even creative. You know, I would I played the piano and I would sing a little bit. You know, I did a little bit of art. I draw my mom is an artist. So I kind of got that from her. Okay. Um, and, you know, I've, like I said, I've always been sex tech savvy. So like as a kid, even like around the age of seven and eight while other little girls were playing with Barbies. Like Barbies never really interested me. You know, <laughs> kind of, you know, I was always interested in playing like um computer games. So if you all remember Clue Finders or Reader Rabbit, I love those. Yes, games. yeah, yeah. Um and so that's kind of what sparked my interest into tech. Okay. All right. 
So that's safe to say that's why you chose your career and absolutely absolutely i would definitely say that um you know that initially sparked my interest and then like a few years later you know getting into like sim city and the sims yeah. um what other game i used to play roller coaster tycoon <laughs> you know, those of you who remember those games and you know i really wanted to go into gaming because i thought that you know, it was just really cool how, you know, I could click somewhere, type something in, and then, you know, it would trigger some type of, you know, some type of action. Right. So I really wanted to, you know, be a part of creating something like that. And, you know, going back to the educational games that I love playing, you know, I really wanted to actually create those games for kids one day. Oh. Wow. Um, and then I would say fast forward a few years later, you know, back before the Facebook days, we had MySpace. Yes, <laughs> you know, <and> MySpace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was like back in, I don't know, middle school, or high school for me. And um, that kind of opened the whole world of like the web. Okay. And that's kind of how I fell in love with the web, you know, and I knew then that I wanted to have a career, you know, in web development. All right. Tell us a little bit about your educational journey, because I know for myself, I was telling you earlier, I went into school knowing I was going to be an engineer. I was going for engineering. I ended up being a teacher. So, you know, just to let our viewers know that, you know, some people changed throughout or some people went straight through and knew exactly what they wanted. Can you just give us a little background of, you know, your choices and then what route did you actually go through? Yeah. So um, I would say like, I kind of always knew I wanted to go into tech, but even, you know, back then I didn't know necessarily what, you know, a title would be. And even my title now that might, may not have, been, may not have even existed, you know, in the way that it does now. Right. Um, but I knew that tech was definitely, you know, a space back then that I wanted to be in. Um, I didn't go to like too many boot camps or STEM related things back then. I just kind of had my own interest in it. Um, so it wasn't really until high school where I actually took a class, you know, for um, a computer science class and I built like a website and um, I think they had the program, it's called Alice, where it kind of teaches you programming concepts. Oh, that's something. Nice. Um, so yeah, I took, you know, my actual, um, took that class back then and um, that, you know, just further, you know, sparked my interest in tech. All right. Now, I know you were saying about now, what is your exact title? Yeah. And then what is that? Because, as you know, some people, we may think they understand what that is, but just clarify. Mm -hmm. first. Yeah. So my title is UI engineer. Um, that's user interface engineer. So I pretty much build what you interact with, <laughs> you know, whether that's Facebook or, you know, in terms of the Web, um, whether that's Facebook or Google or just any web application that you deal with, what you see and interact with, that's what I build um, using technologies like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Um, you build out what you what you actually see, and then the interactions that you're you know able to take when using those sites. So the functionality of the sites. That's what I. Wow, that's that's impressive. That's very <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now we know that the reason why you chose your career. Um, what do you like most about your career? Um, I would say that just, you know, contrary to popular belief, it is very, you know, creative. You know, a lot of times we look at tech and we think it's like just logic and, you know, all this, you know, hard right. or complex stuff. But oh, it's really okay. creative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really creative in nature, you know. Um, and then being that I kind of have like a creative side as well with, you know, doing art and playing piano and things right. like that. Um, it kind of helps me to, you know, tap into that side just in a different way and kind of being able to start from like a blank canvas or for me, a blank text yeah, editor, right. um, and kind of program and, you know, you write all these commands um, and then you have like a masterpiece that people can interact with. That's, you know, kind of what I love most about about being a developer. I'm just typing. Um, for our viewers, before we move on, please ask questions. We do have um, time built in and we do ask our guests questions. So please ask questions or comments. We love them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, with uh, you know, everyone's career, you know, we have the things that we just love. Is there yeah. anything that you would like to um, have changed about your career or would like to see change? And, you know, with your with your industry, I know it's fast paced and it's changing all the time. Mm -hmm. So it could be the direction of it or just like 
I know some people we've asked and they're like, well, I'm the only Af you know, woman of color in my division, you know, so like anything that you would change. Yeah, I would definitely say that's one of them for sure. Just, you know, more diversity in the field, you know, because I know, you know, back in college, I would usually be, you know, the only woman and then woman of color as well in a lot of my classes. And even now, you know, just in, you know, the workplace, you don't have too many, you know, women of color that you can, you know, work with. Right. You know, so I would definitely love to see that change, um, to see more women in the field, more women, women interested in the field. Um, you know, young girls who kind of, you know, have an interest now and they follow that through, you know? Exactly. And it's just, um, I know we were talking about earlier, just that, you know, it's like if you're having a problem in class or you're having something, you can go to your, like your home girl or someone and kind of talk it through. Yeah. It's like in your office, you know, it's not there. And we just need to have more representation because mm -hmm. we know that we are gifted, we are talented, and we can do the work. Right. It's having that opportunity. And so I was just going to ask you with your company, I know some companies um, have like a diversity, like, you know, manager or somewhere that they're encouraging to get more diversity. Mm -hmm. um, do you see that in your company or like in a previous company, like they're really trying to reach out and recruit, you know, women of color or, you know, just people of color in general? Right. Yeah, I definitely think I'm seeing that more, you know, more now in you know my current company. Um, rarely, I want to say this is probably the first time that I've actually been on a team with a, you know, another woman. She's a developer. She's a woman of color. So I think that that is awesome. Um, and I, like I said, I hope to see that throughout the rest of my career as well. Um, so yeah, they do have you know initiatives where they you know try to promote diversity and. Um, you know, just bring on, you know, more people of color on, you know, on into the company. Because um, like you said, I think that, you know, we offer, you know, a, a very valuable perspective. And we do. Um, yeah. And I just, yeah, I think that we have offer, you know, we have a lot to offer in this space. So I would love to see, you know, just more diversity. We have a Joshua Daniel, and you already already been asked, like answering this question, but he said, what has been the most challenging aspect of being in STEM? Um, I would say that just being, in a, yeah, I know that we'll touch on this a little bit more, but I would mm -hmm. say that technology is just ever evolving, just ever changing. So it's, you know, it's fast paced Definitely. and it's kind of, it can be kind of challenging to keep up with everything and to know what to keep up with, you know? So I think that's one of the biggest challenges. Definitely, definitely. Like it, in most jobs now, because technology is so infused into everything, mm -hmm. I think that's in any job that you have to do, yeah. you know, stay current and learn. Cause I just started a new teaching job and I was like, oh, I know that program and mm -hmm. they've added different features that I didn't know anything about. And some of the students was like, oh, you have to do is this, this, watch this. And I was like, Oh, you know, so mm -hmm. any job now is just technology is changing and you just got to stay current and we're always having, you know, um, training sessions because uh, they're updated something new and different things. So absolutely. Yeah. It's like whether you're on the side of the developer or the user, you know, there's always, you know, something yeah. to learn. Yes. And this one, I don't have it typed up, but I'm um, active before the tips and advice. What advice would you give your younger self? Like with everything you know now, what advice would you give your younger self? Yeah, I would definitely say for my younger self is just to not, you know, this, the whole self-doubt, you know, having that self-doubt um, and just going in with confidence, you know, knowing that um, and this will kind of like you say, go into some of the tips and advice. But, um, you know, going at it with confidence and knowing that, you know, you have something of value to add to you know your field whether that is science or or technology engineering or math yes yes now what would be your future goals like what do you see yourself where do you want to go with your career you know i would definitely say um i have aspirations of working in education um, and building out software, not necessarily games anymore like I did as a kid, mm -hmm. but at least software that, you know, helps to assist um, teachers and students. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to work in that space because, you know, you have you have schools now to, that are STEM, um, you know, certified and things like that. And I would really love the opportunity to kind of work in the education space 
and um, along with that teaching, you know, maybe okay. even stuff like this, you know, having opportunities like this to kind of share my experience and, you know, encourage others um, to, you know, not be afraid of STEM. And kind of going back to the previous um, question about tips and advice, mm -hmm. um, I would say that, you know, it it's kind of looking at STEM it can technology in particular, um, it can kind of feel like um, it kind of overwhelming and um, a little like intimidating because it's like you see people in your field who are so advanced and they're like super smart and it seems like they know so much. And then of course, you know, the aspect of it being um, fast paced. But I think that the cool thing about, about technology is that being that it is, you know, fast paced and there's always something new, you know, to learn. And it's like you you have the opportunity to learn alongside people who do have so much experience, you know, because they're learning, you know, just as you are when there when there are new technologies that are, you know, on the horizon. Right. Because right? like I said, I'm just excited. Like with my new teaching experience, they have so many different um, apps or different applications that we can use, even like with the notes. Like the students, you know, they read like a slide, the next slide they type in their answer, then there's a video, then there's a quiz, and then I get a report of how long it took them to do it, mm -hmm. their, their answers, it gets like a graph. And I was like, this is nice. It's just not no longer just showing a PowerPoint and you write down mm -hmm. with PowerPoint, they're interactive. And since students and, you know, people now, we're so on our computers and phones and stuff, the kids really enjoy that. Like, they're like, can we do notes today? And I was like, you want to do no, you know, because they know it's interactive and then they can, they can answer like a discussion question and other people are answering it with them. So they feel like that's chatting. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's really needed. And I'm just said, I'm grateful to have this new opportunity to see all the different technology because I didn't even know it was out there for education. I was like, that's yeah. awesome. So when I started writing my curriculum, I was like, oh, we have to have the interactive stuff. We have to mm -hmm. have that because that's what kids need. They need to be challenged. And then people, just, just think about when we're in meetings and, you know, if somebody's sitting up there and doing a 30-point slide, a 30-thing slide, and we're sitting there like, not again. You're right, right. You know, we can write notes through it and, mm -hmm. you know, send the questions and chat on the side. Like, it's amazing. So I definitely agree. And I think you will have an awesome uh, way in that field because it's mm -hmm. always changing and it's needed. We need to grasp the attention of the readers, the learners and stuff. So I think that's awesome. So great yeah. job. I can't wait to look forward to following your career and seeing how well you do in that field. Absolutely. absolutely. Hope we could collaborate some too. <laughs> I would love that. I would absolutely love that. And that's yes. you know, the thing about tech is like, you know, you need it in every field. Mm -hmm. you know, I try to encourage people, you know, it, if, if you have a, um, you know, an interest in tech, but then you also, you know, have an interest, say, in art or film or, um, you know, medicine or finance, right, right. you, you know, there's a space for you. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> um, before I get to the family influence, how have you combated the stigma of being a woman of color in STEM? And just when I came up with this question, I think about because I just know as a teacher, when I used to walk into, you know, the, the copier room and different things when I first started out, they were like, oh, you're the teacher assistant or you're the IA, which is an aide. I was like, no, I'm the teacher. And they're like, what do you teach? And I'm like, science. Mm -hmm. You teach science. You know, so like, I know by you being a woman of color in the tech field and in your office, how do you like combat those those stereotypes and, you know, mm -hmm. stigma, like they, they're expecting us to come not ready or mm -hmm. you know, like, how do you deal with that? Yeah, it's, you know, it's very interesting because it's, you know, a lot of times when I don't say I join a new team, you know, I'm always the person that they ask, so why did you choose to become a developer? You know, they don't ask anyone else that no, question because they're not expecting, you know, you know, they're expecting a certain answer or something. So, you know, I always think that that's interesting, mm -hmm. but um, I think that it's, you know, as far as combating, you know, the stigma, it's really going, like I said, going in it into it with confidence, you know, knowing the goals that you've set for yourself and, you know, um, being diligent in accomplishing those. And I also think that, you know, seeing whatever obstacles are ahead of you as opportunities for you to, you know, push yourself exactly. and to, you know, push yourself beyond, you know, what you think your capabilities are. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just taking on just more challenging opportunities because, you know, that's the only way you'll grow. 
you know, it's kind of being outside of your, placing yourself outside of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Have you had anyone ever, I'll just follow this question, but anyone ever, um, not really be blatant and racist, but like kind of like try to slide some stuff like at a meeting or like in your classes when you were in school, like, and you're like, is he really saying, you know, like, have you ever had that happen? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily racist, but I would say okay. that or sexist too. Yeah, yeah, I would kind of say, you know, <laughs> I, would, I would definitely say I've been in situations where, um, you know, I offered my perspective where we were all given the opportunity to kind of offer our perspective. I offered mine, it was kind of like kind of blown off, but mm -hmm. if say a male said the same said the same exact thing. It's like, oh yeah, maybe we should do that. And I'm like, all the time, yes. I just said that, <laughs> but yeah. you know, so I've been in situations like that and I would definitely say for, you know, for things like that, you know, just being assertive and confident in, in you know, what you have to offer is is key. Definitely, because I've been there too and I'll raise my hand and I'll say something they're like, okay, okay. And the next person saying, they're like, oh, that's awesome. I'm like, I I think I just said the exact right, same. right. <laughs> same words, and so right. I do agree. Yeah. All right, so we know with everyone's journey, there's sure. always a support system. So this is your chance to tell us about your family influence and your support system. Yeah, so um, I would definitely say I have a super supportive family, um, but in terms of like, I guess my foundation. Um, Growing up, my mom, like I said, she was a teacher. My grandmother was a teacher. Um, and then with them being both educators, they really instilled, mm -hmm. you know, education into me. Like my mom always, like I love, I loved playing teacher as a kid <laughs> just me because too. I love learning. You know, I love just the learning aspect of it. You know, she would always bring home the computer games for me to play. Wow. Um, my grandmother, you know, I spent a lot of time with her as a kid and you know with me and my sister and stuff and we would always she would always prioritize learning for us and so i would say that you know kind of having them as my foundation and just of course growing up into my you know career having them as support you know my dad as well um that has been that's that's been you know helpful helpful to me you know going into my career oh, wow wow we just had a wonderful question. So we're gonna stop for a second. From I think it's Kayla Smith or Kay Kaylee. Yeah. No, Kayla, yeah, that's my sister. <laughs> Hi, sister. She said I am a social media marketer and recently had the opportunity to be a part of my company's new website launch. Because I am not familiar with the language, it can be difficult for me to offer my thoughts, suggestions, etc. What resources do you recommend for a beginner to learn the basics of web development, HTML, etc.? It is intimidating, but I'm realizing it's important to be knowledgeable in so many different areas. Great question. <laughs> that is a great question because, you know, social media, it's definitely the digital space. And sometimes, you know, those worlds between the website and, you know, social media and e-commerce, all that stuff, you know, it, yeah. it collides. So I would say in terms of like, you know, learning kind of those basic skills, mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of Googling, even to this day, even the most experienced people, they they use Google. But um, I would say specifically, um, there are websites like um, Khan Academy, Code Academy, yeah. or Code Academy, um, Udemy. Those are, you know, a lot of times they have free. I, like them. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that there's one book in particular that I think is good for, you know, even be beginners as well. Um, it's just, it's a HTML and CSS book by John Duckett. Love that book. He also has like a JavaScript book if you want to get into more, you know, more technical things. But um, I would say those are some good resources. Um, YouTube, there are a lot of great YouTubers that, you know, talk about tech and kind of go through tutorials and things like that. Um, beyond that, I would say that organizations like General Assembly, they have like beginner courses that you can take um, and, inf and even informational workshops that you can take to learn new skills. Yes, well, that, you gave a lot. I was trying to type them down as quickly as I can, <laughs> right. but um, you did give a lot of great resources. And what I love about a lot of those is that, um, I think it's, it's a kind of academy, it's one of them that's free. So like mm -hmm. oh, something that you can kind of go at your self pace and stuff right. like that at my desk. And, 
I was like, I have a little free time and I started learning how to code a little bit. And I was like, oh, this is a lot though. Just for the little bit I learned, I was like, ooh, because I get frustrated. Stuff doesn't come out right. And I was like, why is that there? So I was like, yeah. I'll leave that to the professionals. I'll leave that to the professionals. So yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, one of our last questions we always love to ask our guests is just, what are some ways you plan on giving back? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will say that I've worked, you know, I've volunteered and stuff for organizations like Black Girls Code, where they, you know, teach, yeah. you know, young girls to code, things like that. Um, and I would say, you know, opportunities like this, being able to, sh you know, share my experiences. Um, I think that's an awesome way to give back, yeah. you know, so that you can show people, you know, there are many journeys, you know, into STEM. Um, you know, as we've seen, you know, with your other broadcasts as well, there's many journeys into STEM. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's, you know, one form of giving back. And then, you know, I hope to one day, um, you know, have workshops and things of my own, whether that's teaching young girls or even, you know, women who are mm -hmm. you know, interested mm -hmm. in tech. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that sounds awesome. You have just enlightened us. And I think it's been a great interview. Before we get off, I just want to ask anyone, um, I want to thank everyone for joining us, but are there any more questions before we get off? Because we have this wonderful mind here and we want to we wanna pick it as best as we can. Especially those who think about getting into tech or ready into tech. Um, I know that's one thing that I'm going to do on Mondays. I, I actually highlight different scholarships. Um, but if you go to nadadanae.com, there is a scholarship central because I know one of the things that, you know, we, we, we promote getting into school, getting into tech, but mm -hmm. then we have to make sure they have the funding. So right. they have the funding, then, you know, then they end up tending to have to drop out because of certain mm -hmm. things. So we want to make sure they know about all the scholarships that are there. Um, so just anything that you guys think that you um, may need, I'm, I'm trying to create resources on the website. And also, like I call it Money Mondays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Got a highlight because I know January has some scholarships that end this month. So if you know mm -hmm. a young lady that's in school or about to go to school, make sure they check out those January scholarships because we definitely don't want those to end without someone receiving that money because that's free money to help them into their journey because we know education is costly. Mm -hmm. So we can find somewhere that we, you know, we can make it to our end of our journey, but not, you know, taking out all these loans and different things would be mm -hmm. great. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we had a great interview. It's been really nice speaking with you. I know we'll Thank definitely you. be in touch and we definitely have to do this again. We look forward to seeing all your future endeavors and everything that you get into. And like I said, I want to definitely stay connected. And so if there's any, I don't think there's any more questions, but we want to thank your family for joining in. I know that. <laughs> very supportive, <laughs> great questions. And even my family, my mom, she always joins us. She's like, well, I really like that interview. After every interview, I really like that one. I like yeah. that And I think that was a Linda Shoemaker Johnson that said it was great. And then Thank I did a watch party and um, on my side. And so some of my family, Felicia, much as my sister, Nikisha said, great. Deborah mm -hmm. said, hi. Um, Jesse Young said, I think this is amazing. Not a lot of women in the <laughs> field. So thank you. Guys, yes, Angie, she said she loved those games you we were talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, those were awesome. Sim City, I still remember that. It's like, oh, I can put my house here and this and that. And then we look back now at the graphics of it. We're like, what is this? You know, but we oh, love the back cool. then. You see how it's involved. Right. Then Nikita Warren said good evening. So I think this was awesome connecting. And I just thank everyone for spending their Sunday evening for about an, um, 30 minutes with us, just learning about all the great things in STEM. We definitely want to encourage other STEM stations out there. Sounds like your sister may want to be one as well. She's trying said, to recruit her. <laughs> yes, so we're going to recruit her so we can have her on here and definitely do a, a nice, wonderful blog about her and any of anyone else who wants to be a STEM station because we are definitely out there. And I don't think I even said what STEM stations are for this one. Usually I say at the beginning, but STEM station, is a trailblazer in the fields of STEM, technology, engineering, and math who are skyrocketing to their highest potential, doing it with style and grace. And so that means we are fierce. We are yeah. here <laughs> and we will be heard. We are not dimming our light for anyone. We, we are showing up to the table. Like they said, they won't let us at the table. 
we will bring our own. So we thank are you. definitely there. So we want to thank everyone. This has been awesome. Thank you. And um, thank you, Brandy, for um, showing up. I love she said, whoop, whoop, black girls do code. <laughs> yes, Danny Alexander said, great job. So this has been great. And I thank, thank you so much, guys. Um, we're going to tune out. But um, feel free to still comment, share the replay, share the live. Absolutely. Thank you so we can get the word out. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> awesome, sensational week. Yes.